Okay, so as you have learned by now, you can use justify content here to define how all your items or your flex items are justified along the main axis. Now in this lecture, we're going to look at another property that defines how your item should align on the cross axis. And remember that we're going to stay with the flex direction row here. So cross axis means the vertical axis that goes from top to bottom. All right, so the property we're going to look at here is called align items. And this allows you to define whether your flex items should be at the beginning of the cross axis, the end, the center, and so on. But at the moment, the container element here doesn't really have that much of a choice or doesn't leave much of a choice in this regard because, well, it doesn't have much of a height. It's just defined by the items within it. So if we add a border to this, you can see that there's not much space that you can use to somehow change the alignment of the flex items on the cross axis here. So let's go ahead and add some height to this one. Let's say 100 pixels or maybe even 200 because this didn't make much of a change. So now you can see that the container now has more of a height and you can see that all the flex items by default stretch to take up all the space, all the height of their flex container. So this is also the default value for align items here, which is called stretch. So if I use this, nothing's gonna change here. But what if, for example, you want your flex items to be aligned here on top, so at the beginning of the cross axis, similar to what they looked like before. In that case, you can use flex start to make them align at the top of the container. And similarly, there's also a property or a value rather called flex end, which will align them at the end of the cross axis. Now, as you might expect, there's also a value called center that will align all of them in the center of the cross axis. Now, one last value you can use, which you probably won't use that often, is called baseline. Now, this is gonna look exactly like flex start in this case, because the baseline of all our flex items here is the same. But let's say we have one item of those. Let's say, for example, the second one has a font size, for example, 20 pixels, should be larger than the rest. Okay, let's make it more obvious by making it 40 pixels, let's say. And you can see that our second item here now has a larger font size, and you can see at the baseline, so the bottom of each character is now aligned here with all the other flex items. And we can make this even more clear in the showcase, for example, we can take a look and take a look at align items here. And then the last example you can see is also using the baseline. And we have items with lower font size, with larger font size, and all of their baselines here are on the same line. Now, different from this, if I would go back to, let's say, flex start here, then all of them would just be at the top and their baselines are at different positions. So again, this is maybe something a bit more exotic, but maybe you're gonna use this in some case. And it's only relevant basically if you have different font sizes in your different flex items. All right, so those are the five different values you can have for the property align items, where you can define how to align your items on the cross axis. Now with the knowledge you now have, you can already do levels one to 13 in Flexbox Froggy. And again, I'm gonna recommend you do that because it really helps the most important thing is to get some practice and not just watch some videos. So make sure to also use this a bit for yourself. And then I'm going to see you again in the next lecture.